Hello and welcome back to the Joyful Soul Creates. Charlotte here with an easy smooshed autumn background birthday card. This is the second card for my month long celebration which includes a giveaway and if you missed the information on that that was in yesterday's video I will have a link to that down below and also a link to the raffle copter for participating in the giveaway. For this card as I said I'm making a smooshed background. I'm using a combination of distress oxides and distress inks in autumnal colours. I actually have only a very limited colour palette of oxides and inks so I just picked out all the ones that seemed suitable. So I have squeezed lemonade in both the ink and the oxide, wild honey and festive berries in the oxide and then spiced marmalade and tea dye in the distress ink. I'm also using a piece of leftover plastic packaging as my tool of sorts for doing the smooshing. So I'm starting with my lightest colour which is the squeezed lemonade. I did the oxide first and then the ink but you can do it either way around. And I smoosh the ink pad onto that packaging, spritz it with water to get it moving and then press it onto my watercolour panel which I have cut just larger than A2 because that means I can cut it down later to be the size I want. Using this kind of plastic pack packaging means I have some control over where the smooshing is going which was useful in this case because I wanted to confine it to the middle third or so of the background. I don't want to cover the entire panel. I'm also drying in between layers with my WOW Dual Speed Heat Tool. This has a cooler slower setting which is great for drying things and a hotter setting which is for the heat embossing. I actually did use the hotter setting for my drying on this card because I was being impatient which did mean that my panel warped a fair bit but I dealt with that later when I adhered it to my card base so it wasn't a problem in the end but if you want it to not warp as much it's better to use the slower setting. So as I said I'm drying in between each layers and switching colours and I'm going from the lightest to the darkest. So I did the squeezed lemonades and then I did wild honey and spiced marmalade which were the oranges. Then I have the festive berries which is a nice red. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that in my photos I actually had the worn lipstick instead of the festive berries. By the time I realised I just didn't have the energy to redo the photos so I hope it doesn't matter too much. Then I finished off with some tea dye and I'm using only just a very little bit of that. So as I'm moving through the colours I'm adding slightly less and less each time to create the look I want for my background. Once I was happy with it and I was sure it was completely dry I took one of the never ending rectangle dies from Cat Scrappiness and die cut it out. I positioned it so that my line of ink smooshing was off center so it's going to be positioned more towards the top when the panel is eventually on my card. Next I have some stamps from Lawn Fawn's Critter Concert stamp set. And I'm just going through these working out which of them I want to use and how I want them arranged to create my little scene and then I'm going to stamp them out onto some alcohol marker friendly paper with alcohol marker friendly ink and colour them in with my Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. For my colouring I wanted to go fairly neutral. I don't want to bring too many more colours in because we have that really fun smooshed background and I don't want to be detracting from that even though these images are going to be the focal point of the finished card. I went with some greys of course for my raccoon. I used brown greys for the darker areas and ice greys for the lighter areas. Areas. My lightest ice grey is running very dry. A lot of my light colours are running dry. If you watch my videos often you've probably heard me frequently talk about how much I'm struggling with my markers running dry and how the nibs all need replacing and yes one day I will sort it. But not yet. <laughs> one day. With the raccoon finished I'm going to colour in the owl and I'm going with browns for the owl. I'm also going to end up using these earth browns to colour the 
stand for the music which the bird is sitting on. I kind of try to pull each of the colours across to each image so I will later add those greys into the owl image as well. I'll colour his little violin grey and the yellow that I use for the owl's beak and feet and for the chick and the raccoon's flute so that ties that in to all of those. Whilst I'm colouring this in, if you've visited my community tab you may have noticed that a card I made recently is in the running for card of the month at Creative Scrapbooker magazine so if you have not done so yet I would very much appreciate if you would head over and vote for me, that would make me very happy. So there will be a link to that in the description box if you need to find it. There's also a link in the description box to the raffle copter if you want to be participating in my giveaway this month. So that's the giveaway that is celebrating reaching 2000 subscribers. Also my 30th birthday which is at the end of the month and if we reach 3000 subscribers before my birthday then there will be a second prize winner as well. In the giveaway. So all the details for that are in the video from yesterday and all the information for entering and the ways you can enter are in the rafflecopter link which as I said again is in the description box below along with all the links to the products I've used in this video and so on. Back to the card, having completed all my colouring I fussy cut my images out and then I'm just working out how I want them arranged on my background. I considered having the background the other way up but decided I did prefer it with the colour more towards the top rather than towards the bottom. Before I adhere them into place I'm going to go around the edge of each of the images with a black brush tip marker. This will cover the white core from where I cut them and just makes it look more finished. This marker is water based because an alcohol based marker is more likely to run into the colouring we've done. So a water-based marker is the better choice here. And a brush tip is great because it easily gets into all those little nooks and crannies. When you're doing this, you want to be bringing your brush from the back of the image because if you bring it from the front of the image, you're more likely to draw on the image and mess it up, which you definitely don't want to do after putting all the time into coloring and fussy cutting them out. Once I had finished with that I created my sentiment strip and I decided to do this off camera but basically what I did was I took a happy birthday sentiment from Hats Off To You which is another lawn fawn stamp set. I heat embossed it on a strip of vellum using Wow's chocolate caramel pearl embossing powder and then I'm going to just wrap the vellum around the back of my panel to hold it in place and I am used the lines on my grip mat to help make sure I get it straight. I think I actually got the sentiment slightly off centre but it's not too obvious so I don't mind too much. <laughs> Sometimes things aren't as centred as I would like but you know it happens with handmade cards. With vellum you really want to be hiding the adhesive you're using because it's going to show through. That's why I'm wrapping my vellum around so that I can adhere it on the back and then I don't need to hide as much adhesive. But I wanted to make sure the front bit wasn't going to be flapping around so much so I'm putting some dots of glue pen behind the letters. And this particular glue pen dries tacky so I let it air dry just a little bit before adhering it onto the panel which meant that the glue is not going to seep out because it's already dried a little bit so it's not as liquidy which meant it's even less likely to show up behind the vellum so that's just a little tip on how to do that. I then put double sided tape all over the back of the panel including over the vellum so that helps hold it in place further. Having double sided tape all over the back is my usual way of adhering panels down but this is particularly useful with a warped panel because having the adhesive over the whole thing means that it will all be in contact with the card base so it kind of counteracts that warpedness of the panel and means it won't cause any issues. The last thing to do is adhere my images into place and I'm using my Tombow Monomalti liquid glue for this. 
and just use my reverse tweezers to help me with the positioning. I'll then press them into place and then just fold the card and that completes it. So I do hope you enjoyed this. Making smooshed backgrounds is really fun and it's a great way to make a loose background. I would definitely suggest playing with different colours and just seeing what works for you. I would love to know in the comments whether you have made smooshed backgrounds before and also please include the secret word autumn in your comments so that I can know for sure that you actually watched the whole video. If you're not yet a subscriber you can press the button on screen to subscribe and there are a couple of other videos if you'd like to see more from me straight away. Otherwise thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!